Hello everyone and welcome to the Forever Young Autobiography Show. Today we're talking about Accidental Sisters. This is a case study about Catherine Lynn Clare's surprising adoption memoir. But first, the show is brought to you thanks to the Structure Success video training, which helps you come up with a rough outline for your own life story project, which could be a memoir as well, could be a biography, an autobiography or something else. So stay with me to the end and I'll have some details about how you can get this free gift. If this is the first time you've come to the show, Big G'day is where we learn how to create life stories for family and friends. So unique memories can live on. And it'd be terrific if you could follow, subscribe, like the show, share it with a friend. So the full title of this book is called Accidental Sisters, the story of my 52 year wait to meet my biological sibling. As I said, it's by Catherine Lynn Kerr, and it is a really wild story. It's very heartwarming. And it was put out recently by Books Fluent. Basically, in a nutshell, this book is, it tells the story of how Catherine decided she wanted to find out more about her medical history. This led then to a very unexpected journey where she discovered she had some missing family she didn't know anything about. So I caught up with her recently to find out more about her and this memoir and what she's learned from the whole process. And she's shared that with us so we can learn for our own projects. So let's get down to it. So firstly, a bit of a note about Catherine's background. She was born in Des Moines in Iowa in the USA and she's been adopted since birth. She said she didn't feel you know, much about it, you know, hadn't really given it too much thought. But then five decades on, she had three daughters of her own and there was questions around their 50% of their own medical history. So she was like, okay, I'm just going to find out about that. You know, you come to this point in her life after 50 odd decades, okay, I really you know, need to find out some critical information for my own daughters. And this led then to the finding of her, of her sister and the story just kept you know, evolving over time and people would come to her saying, so tell me how you found this sister after so many years. And so she was retelling and telling this story over and over again and she was like, I should write a book about this. It just makes sense. Now, of course, it wasn't as simple as that. There was lots of divine intervention on how these sisters connected over time, but there was a lot of really good luck involved. And if it wasn't really for her friends and family, Catherine said she, she wouldn't have been encouraged to take the first step and write this book. But let's get um, a little bit more about the writing of the book. Now she told me it took her three years to do the writing and then she handed it over to, to, for someone else to help with the editing. But she did do a lot of planning in her head, she said, but it got to a point where she just had to get that out put it into a rough outline and that outline, the rough outline changed over time. So that was interesting. Another interesting thing she said was this writing became really fun because she discovered so much about herself and about her sister. There were many, many stories within this bigger story. Of course, uh, anything like this, this you know, exploration of your family history for her, he says there were some very hard bits to it as well. You know, making that understanding or thinking more about her, her birth parents and how they weren't, she describes them as, they were just blobs in the background during her life. You know, she didn't really think too much about it. But when she came to write this book, she really had to like, yep, sit down and kind of explore um, the idea of her mum being pregnant. Like, what was it like for her to give birth and then you know, the stress, the pain and the heartbreak that came in giving up the baby for adoption. So yes, there was a real roller coaster in this writing process. There was, there was some real positives and there were some real, you know, barriers that she had to overcome to get this book published. But what did she learn as a first time writer? There's really three key things that she shared with me. Um, Firstly, that there's good and bad days when you're writing and not to get too frustrated when you have these really bad days. She says, have a sleep, go to bed and um, wake up and you'll be so much more positive. And then that's going to then reflect in your writing. You know, and being consistent with your writing helps, 
helps you build up that practice so you have more good writing days than the bad writing days. So that's actually her tip number two is to find that writing routine and then stick with it. You know, it is that repetition, you're getting, you're getting used to the process and you're sort of training yourself and it just, the effort starts to stack over time. That leads me to her tip number three, which was have a space where you're comfortable to sit down and do your regular writing. You know, you can just go there, that's your, she calls it her writing altar. And that's where she goes and she, she's done her writing now for years. It took her a little while to figure out where that was in her house. She did have a few false stuff, but she says somewhere where it was a big window where she could look out onto nature. That did it for her. So that's pretty much a little bit of a taster. It's a case study about you know, Catherine's, her soul stirring story, which was 52 years in the making to find her sister. So to recap, we've talked a little bit about Catherine, about her book and tips for new writers. And I'm really hopeful that this case study will show that there are some life stories out there that just really demand to be told, that come to the surface and like that's not just enough to be out there. They like, no, just keep sort of pestering you to write them down. And I think that's what's happened here with Catherine. So, yep, they are demanding sometimes these life stories. They want to be recorded. But this show is just a snippet of a, a full article I have about Catherine and her book. Now, if you go to my website, go to foreveryoungautobiographies.com forward slash accidental sisters, you can see the cover of the book. There's a picture of Catherine and her sister. There's also a nice photo of Catherine there on her own. Um, you can find out more details about the book and where you can uh, links there to buy it as well connect with her on, on social media. I'll have all the links for that in the show notes. So please have a look and click through. And while you're over at that article or while you're here, let me know, have you ever had unexpected news like um, Catherine did? Maybe it is to do with adoption. Maybe it's not just some unexpected news in your life. I'd love to hear about it. So leave me a comment or you can ask me any question to do with life story writing. When, when you go to foreveryoungautobiographies.com forward slash contact. So before I wrap up here, I mentioned at the start of the show, uh, free training to do a rough outline for your project, a bit like what Catherine did. You can uh, get all your key memories, key events um, out onto like a plan on the page. And you can get the free training for that. You just go to foreveryoungautobiographies.com forward slash structure success sign up. Again, I'll have the link for that free video training in the show notes. So please check it out. Pop your name, your email in and I'll send it to you. It's a really great way to get started on your own project. So that's it from me. I'll be back again soon with another topic. I really love it. It'd be terrific if you could follow subscribe, like the show. If you got some value out of today, please leave me a review. It all does help. So until then, everybody, happy writing.